Hello and welcome back to another video. This is part three in a series looking at the physics and vehicle dynamics that drivers need to know to help them go faster out on circuit. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how tires do that. My name is David Pittard. I'm a Nürburgring champion, international racing driver and driver coach with over 20 years experience in the motorsport industry, as well as all round petrol head. This is a continuation of the How To Motorsport series. In previous videos, we've looked at the friction circle, we've looked at using vision on circuit, and we've looked at how to learn a new track or new track conditions in the best possible way. Today, we're gonna to look at tires, and this has been the most complicated subject that I've had to research and really look into for the best way to explain it to a camera and to you guys watching. Everything up until now has seemed pretty easy. I will do my best to explain what a driver needs to know about working with the tyre, what the stresses and strains that the tyre is, is going through and how a driver can best operate with the tyre to produce the, the maximum lateral force and therefore the highest cornering speed and then the lowest lap times. I'm not going to go into full detail about these things here, but uh, interesting channels on YouTube that I've seen and, and researched this, this topic is Engineer Ex Explained and also Kyle Engineers. So make sure you check out those channels if you want to learn more about tyre characteristics. First of all, we're going to look into the way in which a tyre produces grip. The resisting force to all of the acceleration forces that the car is introduced to through acceleration, braking and, and lateral acceleration turning side to side as well. The first way in which a tyre generates grip is adhesion grip. And that's your standard friction of force that you find if you're rubbing your hands together. It's the coefficient of friction between the two materials and then the, the force which is applied uh, to each material compressing each force into one another. In this case, it is the tyre pressing into the tarmac and then the deformation of the rubber uh, from the normal force coming downwards uh, moulds to the surface of the uh, tarmac and therefore increases the uh, surface area of the tyre and the, that contact force, that contact area, uh, the larger it is the more grip is produced. Second way is a tyre's hysteresis which is also described as the internal friction of a rubber material. The way in which rubber is constructed, it's almost like loads and loads of elastic bands all wrapped and weaved around each other, and that's the way that the rubber tyre is constructed. As a force is exerted on that tyre, those uh, elastic bands all expand and contract, uh, all whilst they're still woven in and, out, in and around one another, and that internal force, that internal movement and energy transfer, um, also is there is friction and resistance between in the rubber itself and this helps this adds to the uh, amount of friction and resistive force that the tire then gives both these ways in which a tire generates grip obviously creates heat and the more heat that a tire can have up to a certain point of its operating temperature the more malleable that uh, rubber then becomes, which means that it will mould into the surface of the tarmac even more and therefore generate even more grip, which is why warm tyres are always faster than cold tyres. We also need to define the two types of friction that a tyre goes through when it's being pushed up to the limit, on the limit and beyond the limit. Those two types of uh, coefficients of friction are the static coefficient of friction and the dynamic coefficient of friction. The static coefficient of friction is when a tyre is not, there is no slip angle, there is no slide involved. A slip angle is the angle between the path of a tyre that it is directed in. So for example, if there's a steering angle of five degrees, however, because of the, the speed and, uh, evolved, uh, involved, the tyre is only travelling at a radius of three degrees, there is a two degree slip angle in between the steering, or which way the tyre is actually going, uh, is, is, point, is being pointed, sorry, versus which way the tyre is actually going. Therefore, that slip angle changes the type of friction that is, is used. So, up to that point, the tyre and the track, or the track surface, are static. There's no movement between them. The tyre rolls onto the track and then rolls off it again as the, as the tyre moves. However, when we get to that slip angle point, this is where the dynamic coefficient of friction is, there, is then used. Because the two 
there's a difference between the path in which the steering is being pointed and in the direction of which the tyre is actually going, there is now a movement across the surface. So that means that the tyre is now moving across the surface of the tarmac and therefore there's now a dynamic coefficient of friction to be used. And as a result, there is a difference between the two, with the static coefficient being coefficient of friction being higher than the dynamic coefficient of friction which can it starts to introduce why a car would start to slide when it's pushed beyond the limit when there is a, uh, a slide and, and, and therefore a spin however a grip doesn't completely vanish and we will look into that in more detail now so this is where things are going to start to get more complicated and to try and help explain this we're going to use a graph which displays the lateral force versus the slip angle of a tyre and we'll look at the relationship between the slip angle of a tyre and how much for uh, lateral force, how much cornering force can be produced between the two. So the graph shows that there is a linear, linear relationship between the amount of lateral force being produced and the amount of slip, slip angle that's being used up to a point. And this is where the, the defining point is when the tyre moves from the static coefficient of friction to the dynamic co coefficient of friction. So when the uh, slip angle starts to uh, is, is, is increase so much that the frictions involved and the way that the tyre is moving across the tarmac on the circuit changes. The first half of the graph is the using the static coefficient of friction and it's very li linear, one is, is directly relatable to the other until it gets to a point, uh, at which point the, in, in theory the tyre would then switch from straight from static coefficient of friction to dynamic coefficient of friction. However, because the tyre is almost, um, it's not like a switch, some parts of the tyre will start to slide earlier than other parts of the tyre, therefore there's a very rounded top to the, the real graph which shows that di as different parts of the tyre start to move from the static to dynamic coefficient of friction, there is a peak and then a drop, uh, and then quite a flat line after that, which shows the amount of lateral force available in that tyre. So as a driver, you're trying to keep yourself at the very top of that graph, always producing the max maximum lateral acceleration available. So the graph shows how the slip angle versus lateral force increases up to a point and then it starts to drop off and drop down and in that transition point where the tyre goes from uh, it's still in that transition of static and dynamic uh, coefficients of friction even if you then go into a big slip angle, so a big slide where the tyre is really uh, is not gripping a huge amount on, on the track and it's uh, sliding a lot the grip uh, lateral acceleration that can be produced isn't just gone. So that shows that even when you overstep the limit of uh, the tyre and the car starts to slide, it's not like grip is completely gone and, and it's almost like a rug is pulled out underneath your feet. The tyre still produces grip. And this is a good example of this is looking at drifters. Drifters are always in the very far side of the graph. They're always in maximum slip angle yet the tyre is still able to produce grip. However, when we look at it, that they're, they're not in the peak area of the graph, it shows that they may not be producing the maximum lateral acceleration, the maximum amount of grip, but they're still, the tyre is still producing grip. And that also comes from the phrase, a racing phrase of, yeah, going sideways round a corner is not the fastest way around the corner, but it definitely can be one of the most fun ways to go around a corner. And when you're going from, treaded tyres or a semi-slick tyre to a slick tyre, this is the difference in the graphs that are available. You will see now that the slick tyre, as the example we were initially using, has a very high peak of lateral grip for relatively low slip angle, but it's a very aggressive pointed top. This shows that uh, the slick tyre can produce the maximum amount of grip available, but there's a very small operating window for it to produce that maximum force, meaning that you're always on a bit of a knife edge when it comes to m extracting the maximum out of that tyre. And this is true because you don't really see Formula 1 cars, certainly of the modern era, sliding around. It's all very pinpoint, precise driving, and that's how you get the most out of slick tyre. However, then when we move to more towards the semi-slick and the, the treaded tyre, which may be used in uh, some forms of uh, motorsport, um, 
like club production level where they have the, the cut slick tyres or tr just road tyres, <clears throat> you can see that there's obviously a lower um, lateral um, maximum lateral force. However, the, the top to the graph is much more rounded, much more open. This shows that there is a much wider area for tyre movement and tyre slip before you start to see that uh, drop off in, in grip. This means that you can start to slide a car more on this semi-slick and slicked um, and treaded tyre versus a, um, a slick tyre. The graphs also show that you have to have a small amount of slip angle to maximise a, a tyre's la maximum lateral force. Otherwise, if you're not confident in having the car moving around you and underneath you a little bit, you're not going to be able to maximise the tyre's grip. Obviously jumping straight into slick tyres would be quite a jump for someone because there is such a small and, and pointy operating window. That's why it's always good when you're learning new, uh, learning to drive a car, you just jump in something like a road car with a nice open to uh, topped um, road tyre to top to the curve so that when things start to slide, things start to slide early, earlier. More, prog more progressively so it gives you a chance to understand what's happening underneath you and then that way is there's a better way of learning. And this is why one of my top tips for new drivers is to go on a drift day. If you want to learn about maximizing your, car, your car's grip or a tyre's grip then you need to be confident in operating your car on the edge of grip and you're going to get it wrong. It's only natural that you're going to make a mistake and you're going to take a spin. But the best thing you can do is do that in a controlled environment where you're not in a circuit, you're not going to fire yourself on, off into the barriers or anything like that. Do it at a drift day where you can start, you can practice driving on the limit at a slower speed in a controlled environment. And then when it comes to actually applying that to the circuit, you'll automatically be more confident, you'll, you'll understand what's happening to the car, the tyre more. When you're on that, that limit and things start to happen, you will also have the experience on how to correct and bring the car back um, below the limit rather than not, uh, freezing up or panicking and then continuing above the limit and then causing a spin ultimately as a result of it. So yeah, this um, friction force versus la maximum friction force versus slip angle graph is a very useful graph to understand. So how does a driver operate the tyre at its limit? Understanding what a tyre is going through, the forces that are exerting on it and how the tyre goes from gripping to then slipping is all very useful knowledge to understand what is happening underneath you when you're in a car on the circuit. As mentioned earlier on in this video, to maximise the force or cornering force or braking force or any acceleration force on the tyre, you're going to have to introduce a small amount of slip. So if you want to drive a car to its absolute maximum, you're going to have to be comfortable with managing a car um, that is slipping and sliding. And that does mean that you're going to occasionally overstep the limit which for me therefore really emphasises that you must have a good confidence in your car control. And it's something that I really try to push to any new driver or inexperienced driver is to jump and do a drift day. A drift day will give you that confidence that you need to apply on circuit, so I can't stress that enough. Get a few track days underneath your belt, roughly know where you're going, but then jump on a drift day and then you will see your confidence on the track days improve massively. So how did we get a maximum out of a tyre on the absolute limit? And we're going to come back to this point again. Smooth, smooth, smooth. The smoother you can be with the steering inputs, the smoother you can be with those throttle inputs, and the smoother you can be with the braking inputs as well, that's going to benefit you massively. That's going to keep you on the edge of the traction circle, and also is you're going to load the car up um, smoother and in a more controlled way. As mentioned in my previous video of weight transfer, the smoother you can transfer the weight around, you're not going to shock the tyre into losing grip. And now we're going to look at this graph which is shows how you can sh potentially shock a tyre into a losing grip, even if you might be doing the correct amount of steering, uh, the correct amount of uh, braking, accelerating, etc. But if you do that all too fast and too quick, then you're going to, just going to overshoot and end up way over the limit of grip and not be able to come back again. That, that momentum that you're taking over the limit of grip is too much and you won't be able to catch it again. The smoother you can be, the smoother you'll be able to come up to the limit of grip 
And even if you do overshoot it, there'll be very little momentum that will take you way beyond the limit of grip that you won't be able to get, get yourself back again. So it's all about trying to drive up to the limit of grip as smooth as you can and control it on that limit. I hope now that you've watched these three videos of the friction circle weight transfer and tyre characteristics that it gives you a better understanding on what a racing driver or a driver on track is trying to achieve with the tools he's working with, with his car. For me, these three points are the key points that a driver must understand so that he understands what he's working with and what he needs to, and why he needs to be doing exactly what he's being told by an instructor or when he's reading up on how to improve his driving. These three videos should have explained the physics and vehicle dynamics of why all of those tips of being smooth and um, transferring weight as slowly and smoothly as possible. This is the physics related to all that. So I hope you can take this knowledge on track with you, but please stay tuned and stay subscribed for many more informative videos like this to come as we come into track day season for 2021 and also race season for 2021. So thank you very much for watching and whilst you're here on the channel, make sure you check out this classic on board here and also check out my first vlog from the 2020 season where I headed down to the Bathurst 12 hour in Australia. Until next time, this done.